Welcome to Vintage Cars of Victoria. I'm Joey Scarfone. We are going to take a look at some of the rarest and most beautiful vintage cars that live right here in Victoria. Stay tuned, I think you'll enjoy this. With us on the show today is Kristen Smith. Kristen, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Joey. Thank you. I'd like to talk about the cars, but before you do that, can we talk about your younger days in England? Of course. Um, born and raised in, uh, in northern England, Yorkshire, and uh, just over the county there is where Rolls-Royce is actually still made to these days. So growing up as a child, one would often see vehicles of this vintage rolling around. Um, a very good family friend of ours uh, was uh, very successful in business and actually owned one of these. So it was at the age of eight that I decided if I'm going to be successful, that's what I'm going to have. And it looks like you have done very well. We've got the twins now. That's yeah. correct. Yes. Um, can we talk about the most distinctive feature like the grill and the mascot? Of course. Absolutely distinctive Rolls-Royce Grecian grill and the spirit of ecstasy, sometimes called the Flying Lady. Um, this was actually designed by Lord Beaulieu in, uh, in England to uh, immortalize his mistress, who was, of course was of a younger class and couldn't really in the days uh, set up a relationship with her in public. So he designed this to represent her face, her features, and it's still on the front of every Rolls Royce today. And I understand it has an anti-theft device. Anti-theft? <laughs> just in case somebody wants to come and take the lady away. I see that on the newer model, the anti-theft device is a little different. Absolutely, Joey. The spirit of ecstasy or the flying lady disappears into the grill every time that the ignition is turned off. When she's turned on, up she comes. And can you tell us something about the older Rolls Royce you have? Absolutely, Joey. This particular one here is a 1972 long wheelbase Silver Shadow. It was one of only probably a thousand that was made between 1970 and 1974. So really it is quite a rare vehicle. And how much horsepower is in this car? This has got a, a horsepower of about uh, 280 horses. Um, I still like to think it will pass anything on the road, apart from a gas station. She does like to drink. <laughs> I understand zero to 60 is... $28. <laughs> so, Kristen, can you tell us about when you purchased this car? I purchased about four years ago. Um, I am the fourth owner of the vehicle and hopefully the last. Um, the amazing thing is, is I still have the original bill of sale that an admiral from the Navy brought the vehicle over from Crewe, Manchester as a brand new vehicle in 1972 for £8,000, which was the sale price at that time. Which would translate into how many dollars? Probably about $35,000 in 1972 money. Quite an expensive vehicle even then. What was it that attracted you to this car, Kristen? Rolls-Royce has always had the uh, claim to fame of being the best car in the world. I'm a firm believer of buying once and buying well. Even before the days of royalties and, um, and people infringing on, on patents, how many companies also said, we manufacture the Rolls-Royce of sewing machines or the Rolls-Royce of carving knives or it is the best car in the world? In fact, excellence was one of their mandates from the very beginning. Absolutely, and still is today. This particular model is the long wheelbase edition, one of only very few that was made in 1972, which happens to be my birth year. That was the interest in getting at such an older vintage vehicle. There isn't a Rolls-Royce dealership in Victoria, so how did you find a Rolls-Royce? Well, wanting one since I was a very young child at eight years old, um, I would always be on the lookout for one, but they are so incredibly rare, especially this model, the long wheelbase, um, that as soon as I started looking, probably about eight or nine years ago, when this one came up, it was like, I've got to jump on this. The car actually came from Vernon, 
and was brought over to me in Victoria on the ferry. As soon as it drove off that ferry, it was an instant love affair. I had to have it. And did you have to do any work to it or what shape was it in? The car is absolutely original. So Kristen, what makes this car worth 8,000 pounds when it was purchased? Um, all Rolls Royces, even today, are still hand built. Um, every component inside has been built by somebody in crew in England. It's two and a half ton of solid sheet metal. And there's probably over a dozen coats of paint on this that was layered and layered and layered. Even the chrome work, uh, to say it's 42, 43 years old, is still in pristine condition. They scrimped on nothing. That's why they still have the reputation of excellence. There's not a scratch on this chrome. It's still being very well maintained. Uh, and when we have a look at the interior of the vehicle, you will understand 8,000 pounds was actually quite cheap. And the grill is somewhat different than the newer models. Of course, this is the Ionic uh, Grecian style uh, grill that was on the, uh, the clouds and the shadows and the dawns. They've gone to a different, slightly more rounded shape now to keep up with the times. This is the 1972 classic uh, Silver Shadow Rolls Royce. The Everglass roof on this indicates that it is the long wheelbase edition. At 18 foot 2 inches long, it's one of the biggest Rolls Royces that was made at the time. This was in production from 1967 up to 1980. 22,000 of them were made. Only about 5% of them had this extra 9 inches of space in the back, which makes it almost like a limousine. We've talked about the exterior of the car, but can you tell us something about the interior and how it handles? 1972, the best car in the world, even was above its time for that time period. Um, electric seats, electric windows, electric door locks, uh, air conditioning, cruise control. North American varieties of vehicles weren't producing vehicles with those as standard at that time. So it's quite a comfortable ride. It is like driving a living room. It is absolutely amazing. It's incredibly light on the steering. Even for a two and a half ton vehicle, uh, it's very easy to park. Um, it picks up beautiful speed. And on the highway at 90 or 100 clicks, it's just like driving a cathedral. Even in 1972, Rolls-Royce had automatic windows on all of their doors. There is 14 Connolly hide leathers that are involved in the manufacturing of the interior of this. The walnut inlay takes about 300 man hours just to install and it is bookmarked, mirror imaged on either side of the dashboard and the whole vehicle. Just behind me here, there is a mirror and a light so that ladies, when they are going to their functions, can just powder their nose, apply their lipstick, just so that they look so elegant to match the car. Your luggage, my lord. Now that's a big trunk. Of course, not, not only was this designed to be chauffeur driven, but it will carry four full passengers very, very comfortably. Um, there's enough space in the back to put four pieces of luggage quite easily, and of course, the traditional picnic basket. So it was really designed as a long range travel vehicle as well. A very high end, luxurious, comfortable touring vehicle, yes. We're looking at the heart of the Rolls Royce, its engine. Can you tell us something about the evolution of their motors? First vehicle that was produced in 1904 had a 10 horsepower um, engine that was designed by uh, Rolls and Royce at the time. What we're looking at today in the Silver Shadow is a 6.75 litre V8 engine. Rolls Royce were renowned for their quality and their excellence of their craftsmanship. So much to the point that even in the late 70s, Rolls-Royce split off and started producing aeroplane engines, which are still used today on many commercial airlines. 
In fact, they've become the cornerstone for commercial airline engines. Absolutely, yes. And got into the country's needs, Britain's needs in the First World War, I believe. They were manufacturing engines for the war effort. Both in the First World War and increasingly more in the Second World War, um, Rolls-Royce actually built armoured tank vehicles uh, for uh, the Department of Defence. They still even had the spirit of ecstasy on the front. If I was a mechanic, what would I look at comparing this to modern engines with Rolls-Royce? The beautiful thing about this particular 6.75 litre V8 is that it's accessible. You can see the distributor cap, you can see the carburetors, you can see the air intake manifold. On the newer versions, like most vehicles, you just don't have access to that. So it's very easy to work on. It's easy to work on. The parts are difficult to find sometimes, but it's really a mechanic-friendly engine. This is a most luxurious interior. I can see something I haven't seen for a long time, an eight-track stereo. Of course, that's what they had installed there in, uh, during the day, of, along with the radio system. Uh, Rolls-Royce fitted wonderful, wonderful things, even in the early 70s. As mentioned earlier, um, full cruise control. The uh, air conditioning still blows ice cold after 43 years. Um, electronic windows, electronic seats, electronic central locking, power steering. And one of the most beautiful things that they still even use today is these organ stops for the air conditioning. Still used in the brand new vehicles today. I see they have a little switch over here which turns on an overhead light for a, to read a map if you should be traveling. And the light is right up here, which is the perfect place for it to be. You would think on another car they might put a light down here, but actually that is the perfect spot for a, a map light to be. Now this is the boot unlock to unlock the trunk. This is a light for the inside of the glove box, and the door to the glove box opens and closes very, very smoothly. Just another example of fine craftsmanship. Every little detail, everything to perfection. There is a Yale lock to lock the glove box. I'm very curious, Kristen, does the ignition key lock and unlock the glove box? Of course. Rolls-Royce, one key fits all. Most chauffeurs were driven using their left hand, so the ignition on most vehicles is on the right. Rolls-Royce, even today, still keep them on the left. So this is a uh, generator indication light because this car has a generator, not an alternator. Of course, the headlights and also interior lights. Simple oil. Rolls-Royce never ever put a tachometer in their vehicles. You don't need to know how many revs you are using. And what is the top speed of this car? When this car was brand new, Joey, uh, Rolls-Royce said that it would do um, about 125 miles an hour. Now I've, I've taken it to about 75 miles an hour and I'm comfortable with that. You've told us about how fast the car goes. How is the braking system in this vehicle? Because she's two and a half ton of solid metal, Joey, uh, Rolls-Royce designed a dual braking system. Um, so calipers and struts come down on both uh, times to stop the vehicle. Um, in a company to that, it, each wheel has its own suspension mechanism. One of the first and pioneering engineering techniques that they built into this. We're going to jump ahead 27 years now and take a look at the engine of the 1999 Silver Seraph. So quite a different animal you will find under here, Joey. No distributor <laughs> cap, no air intake manifolds that you can physically see. This is the 5.4 litre V12 engine. It is actually a BMW designed engine, Rolls-Royce built. Um, this was taken from the flagship of the BMW series, the 7 series. 
Of course, there is no tinkering allowed with this anymore. You cannot see your distributor cap. You can't see your carburetors. This is all electronic now, so you just plug in a computer and it gives you the diagnostics. Smaller engine, but far more significantly powerful. So how many horsepower is this, Kristen? This will pump out about 375 brake horsepower. Um, again, still pulling almost a two and a half ton of solid metal, but a beautiful, quiet, incredible engine. What is the significance of this plate here, Kristen? Uh, Joey, every single Rolls-Royce that has ever been manufactured and will be manufactured always has a plaque de -teaming, determining that it is Rolls-Royce with its own serial number. On the interior of the car as well, there is a manufacturing date who actually inspected it. They don't want anything ever to go wrong. Attention to detail. Absolutely. So how quiet is this car, Kristen? Well, let's fire her up and find out. It's that quiet. And on the highway, all you hear is the wind. So over here, again, just like in the old car, we have the lights still here, both external and internal. And I have my own personal climatic control here for the driver alone. What is this thing here? This is my DVD satellite navigation system. Uh -huh. So also in the front here, we have dual air conditioning or heating zones. We have identical in the rear of the vehicle, heated seats both in the front and in the back. The seats in the back have four different ways of moving. You can sleep back there quite easily. And of course, the modern technologies of the new era, your own telephone. Yes, more champagne. <laughs> Even with this open on the highway, perfectly, perfectly quiet in this vehicle. This, of course, is for the uh, rear passengers of the vehicle. Again, two separate zones, heating, cooling. Sticking with tradition, the cigarette lighter. Mini little cup or champagne glass holder. And, of course, underneath here is your four-way heated rear seat adjustments. Very nice. Very comfortable, sir. And what car wouldn't be complete without your own scotch bar? Salud. Salud. I hope you've enjoyed today's show. If you'd like to know more about vintage cars, or if you have a vintage car you would like us to take a look at, you can contact me by email, joey at vintagecarsvictoria.com. We hope to see you next time on Vintage Cars of Victoria. Bye for now.